Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. It turns out that you might actually be using your air conditioning wrong. <laughs> I love those titles. You're doing it all wrong. Anyway, uh, right. There are two ways in particular that uh, you, you may not be using your air conditioning quite correctly. Now, of course, everyone loves air conditioning. I love air conditioning. Uh, I don't like heat and humidity. I like it cold. First of all, let me go over a quick recap of how air conditioning actually works in case you don't know. So basically, um, this is an example of a, an air conditioning system with the, the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. Uh, if you have like central air, for example, uh, prevalent mostly in say North America, um, it's not terribly complicated. You have a compressor and the compressor compresses a refrigerant. And the whole idea is just that uh, basically you have uh, a compressed refrigerant that is cold. And when you blow hot air from inside the house over that refrigerant, uh, you know, the air blows across a heat exchanger. There are little metal coils that actually cools the air. It removes humidity from the air and then the refrigerant heats up again. It then circulates to an outdoor unit and the outdoor unit actually has another fan and that blows the, uh, well, the outside air is hotter, but the refrigerant is even hotter. So that actually pumps a whole lot of heat outside and then the cycle just completes and voila, you have a cool house. There are a couple other sorts of air conditioners that you're probably aware of. One is the window air conditioner, which is essentially the same system as central air, except it's kind of included in all one unit. And you have kind of the outside half that's sticking out outside through the wall and you have the inside half and it works pretty much the same way. And the third type is the so-called monoblock air conditioner, which is more popular in Europe and many other countries. This one is a little bit different. It's again, the same exact concept, except it's kind of all stuffed into a, usually an upright unit on wheels. And this one is a little, a little bit different because what it does is it actually sucks air in from the room, hot air. And of course it cools it as usual, but of all the air that it sucks into the unit, a portion of that air it takes and it cools it and blows it back into the room. The rest of the air is actually used for the let's remove the heat stage and it actually is vented out a flexible conduit uh, either through a slightly open window that you sealed off or uh, many times people just drill a hole in the wall and have a vent with like a pipe sticking through. Um, so the problem with monoblock uh, air conditioners is that they create a negative pressure situation. Because they're actually sucking in the room air and blowing part of it back into the room to cool off the room and part of that air, that room air, is being used to remove the waste heat and blow it out the conduit through the wall outside the house they create a situation where um, you're using it to cool a single room. So from an adjacent room, either underneath a door, maybe through uh, poorly sealed windows, you're, you, you always have the situation where you're actually sucking warm air from an adjacent room into the air conditioned room because, it, because they're, they're creating a negative pressure. They're, they're using the room air and pumping it continuously outside the house in order to cool the room as they operate. So monoblock air conditioners are less efficient than central air and window air conditioners. Uh, central air and window air conditioners, of course, take basically the air that's in the room or the house, and they're just continually recirculating that same air. Monoblocks are actually kind of sucking air from adjacent rooms in order to do their cooling thing. So, okay, that's how air conditioners work, but what are the actual problems? What is it that you're doing wrong? So, um, if you uh, do a little search, you will find that everyone recommends that you uh, get a programmable thermostat and say if you're on vacation or when you're away from work eight hours a day, you're supposed to set your programmable thermostat so that it raises the temperature while you're gone and say like an hour before you return home, uh, the programmable thermostat drops the temperature, the AC kicks in again and it runs for like a solid one or two hours to cool the house back down again. Now, if you talk to, say, like physicists, they will regale you with wonderful tales of like thermodynamics and heat transfer, and it all sounds very, very nice. If you ask the Department of Energy, they recommend that you do the same thing. The interesting part is that if you actually talk to an HVAC technician, if you talk to, say, builders, 
uh, if you talk to construction workers, if you talk to the people who repair appliances, especially the people who repair air conditioners, they will tell you, no, don't do that because it's very bad. So what gives? Who's actually right here? I mean, the physicist with a PhD, you know, theoretically, uh, they might actually be correct, but uh, why do engineers and HVAC techs and builders and construction workers and all repairmen and all these other people say, no, don't do that. Set it at a constant temperature and just let it run 24 hours a day. Well, the answer as usual is it's complicated. So the first thing to understand is thermal mass. When your air conditioner is running, it's cooling the air inside your house, right? Duh. The problem there is that as the air conditioner is cooling the air, you also have stuff in your house. You have a couch and a TV and furniture and walls and a floor and, and so on and so forth. That stuff also needs to be cooled down. So as the air is cooled down by the air conditioning unit, all the objects in your house are hot, so they also need to be cooled down. So then the air conditioner has to work harder, because as the air cools, the stuff in your, in your house is actually leaching heat back into the air, so the air conditioner has to work harder and harder and harder, and it just continuously runs and runs and runs until a point of equilibrium is reached. And at that point, everything in your house is at a certain temperature, and the air is at a certain temperature, and then it doesn't have to run quite so often. Now, according to the physicists, well, that's okay because if everything heats up a little bit, no big deal, right? Yes and no, because it depends on how well insulated your house is, it depends on the humidity level where you live, um, if you have your air conditioner, uh, if you have the temperature go up during the day, uh, suddenly you have this constant thermal cycling. That means that everything in your house is going to heat up, and then it's going to cool down, and it's going to heat up, and it's going to cool down. Uh, if you live in a humid environment, you have the humidity level po possibly in the house going up and going down, going up, going down. That's also not good. You also have the fact that your air conditioner is basically not going to run all day, and then suddenly an hour before you come home from work, your programmable thermostat's going to kick in, and it's going to say, run air conditioner, run, and then what happens? Well, the thing runs nonstop, not usually for one hour, but possibly for two or three hours. It just goes and goes nonstop to try and get the temperature back down. So if you actually do the math, um, yes, yeah, sometimes it actually saves you money, sometimes not. The same is true at night. Many people at night, they have their air conditioning go way up because they go, ah, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. But again, it's complicated because if you're like me, at night when I'm sleeping, that's when I want it cold the most. Because when it's hot and humid, I don't sleep well. And when I don't sleep well, what happens? Well, then I wake up and I'm cranky. And when I'm ornery, <laughs> then I'm less productive. And I'm less happy. And I, you know, whatever. I'm less effective with work. I'm, I'm, I just feel like crap, right? So if I pay a little bit of extra money, how do, I, how do I actually quantify that? How do I say, like, well, I'm saving five euros a month by having my air conditioning go up at night, and so, yay, I'm saving money, but what kind of lost productivity do I have, you know, when I'm at work and I'm, I'm trying to do stuff, and I'm like, ah, because I didn't have a good night's sleep. And, of course, the longer the heat goes on, the less and less sleep I get and the less effective I am, the less focused I am, the less productive I am. So there are all kinds of things that come into play here, and it's not quite as simple as just thermodynamics, as the physicist might tell you. Also, you have to consider the wear and tear on the air conditioner itself. When appliances cycle on and off, um, that's kind of, it's generally a good thing. You don't really want your appliance running like non-stop, you know, pedal to the metal for like three hours on end uh, every day it's probably better to just, you know, it runs and it removes a little heat here and then it turns off for a little while and then it turns on again and it removes a little heat and then it turns off versus, oh look, it's 5 p.m., you know, crank the air conditioner way down, you know, the pro programmable thermostat kicks in and says, you know, go, 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 cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, that's not so good. You also have to consider things like if you live in a humid climate, then your air conditioner is actually doing more work to remove the humidity from the air than it is to remove the heat from the air. Uh, generally speaking, if you live in a warm and dry climate, your air conditioning has to work only to remove the heat, but not the humidity. 
in a humid climate, it's going to do a lot of extra work to remove the humidity. So if the humidity levels are going like this, uh, that kind of makes the situation worse. Uh, it's also not good for everything in your house. Uh, say you have a very expensive fancy wood floor or something, and the humidity levels are going like this all the time. As you're probably aware, that's not necessarily good for a wooden floor. Things bow, they expand, they contract, and you know, do you want to be kind of thermal cycling and humidity cycling everything in your house? And what what is that going to mean in terms of the long-term reliability of your fancy wooden floor or appliances or your furniture or whatever? So there are all kinds of details that you need to consider here, and one of the foremost details you need to consider is just your own comfort. Uh, in the winter time, you have your heat running, and you don't give it a second thought. But in the summertime, suddenly you're supposed to save energy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're going, right, well, what if I just set my air conditioner at a constant temperature and I just ran it that way, um, even when I'm sleeping? In many places at night, electricity is cheaper. So why would you have your air conditioning temperature go up at night when electricity is cheaper? That's actually when you want to run it. So, yeah, it's complicated. The second misconception that people have about air conditioning is that if I turn the temperature way down, it's going to cool things off faster. That's absolutely false. And I've heard this one like a million times. <laughs> it's not true. So the way that an air conditioner works is the compressor is compressing the refrigerant and that's what gives you the magic cooling power, right? Okay. A compressor has a certain amount of electrical power that it will consume, which means it has a certain amount of cooling power. When you actually turn an air conditioner on, and it's running, it has that fixed amount of cooling capacity. If it's a gajillion degrees in your house, or it's way less than a gajillion degrees, when the, the air conditioner runs, it's going to... the compressor is going to run at, at a fixed rate. The, the cooling power is, is fixed. Now, in the case of, say, a monoblock air conditioner, you may turn it on and you go, yeah, I'm going to put the temperature, you know, down to like, you know, 50 below zero, and I have the perception that it's cooling faster. But in actuality, no, it's not cooling faster because it can't. Now, it's true that the, the lower you put the temperature, maybe your air conditioner has several fan speeds, as in the case of a monoblock air conditioner or a window air conditioner. Sure, there are multiple fan speeds. But if the fan is going at the higher speed, it's pumping more air through the system, that's all well and good. But the actual compressor, the part that's doing the actual cooling, is essentially a fixed capacity. It cannot cool any faster. So once you're on the highest fan speed and your compressor is going as fast as it can, that's it. You don't get any more cooling power. So you can put the temperature down to like, you know, 50 below zero, and it may psychologically give you some comfort, and it may make you think that it's actually cooling faster, but in reality, it's not. It will take a finite amount of time for the air conditioner to be able to remove a certain amount of heat, and that's that. Of course, there's no harm in putting the temperature way down. If it makes you psychologically happy, then knock yourself out, because, well, you know, sometimes that helps. So there you have it. Uh, you're using your air conditioner wrong. <laughs> <laughs> for more Techie Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.